How you doing? My name is Bill Ferrari, the president of Liberty Welding Company. We're America's oldest axle repair company. And come March of next year, I'll be here 50 years myself. In those 50 years, I've repaired just about anything you can think about on a truck, front axles, spindles, build up and remachine a hub, build up and remachine the differentials, build up and machine spindles and spun them in the axle, in it, whole axle on the leg. That's how we used to do it back in the old days. But around the late 70s, early 70s, we started developing ways we could replace the spindle on site. Back in them days, I earned two patents, one for repairing the spindle, one for replacing the spindle. Now, we have our new enhanced system that makes it a lot easier for replacing spindles on trucks and trailers. Our enhanced system just got awarded a new patent back in July of this year. So we have three patents on this stuff, so we're probably more experienced than anybody. Uh, a person that buys our system, you know, they can, it's pretty lucrative. You know, one guy can make six figures doing the work, and it's a win-win. Especially when you're saving the guy hundreds of, and even thousands of dollars of not replacing that housing. And you know, replacing the housing is pretty expensive. You know, I've talked to guys that had it done, and some people waited two months to get a housing. And comes us. We're the only ones that has a, the system and the method that's patented to put these spindles on the way it was manufactured. If you look closely to our heavy duty spindles, most of these spindles are on the tractors and trailers and the dump trucks you see on the highway every day. These spindles is a drop forge spindle. The journals are heat treated to help from wearing. This is the same spindle that, that comes on your housing when it's new. Same thing. It's, for our alignment equipment, it's butt welded on. That's the way they're made. It's, the system, these housings and these axles are not designed to insert it. Remove the material on the inside of the housing, this common sense is going to tell you it's weaker. I don't care how thick that piece of metal is that's going in there, it ain't going to be no stronger. This, this housing has got to be one piece from one end to the other end to, to maintain its flexibility and strength. The other thing I'd like to give you some education on these spindles they don't have to be replaced at 6,000. Our competitors out there are scaring people, talking about tragic events, 6,000, you know, for the last 50 years, I'm giving tolerances of around 15,000 on these bearing drums. Are they going to wear out? The, these spindles can last over a million miles easily. Sometimes way more than that. What wears these spindles out is the end play is not adjusted right. People are taken for granted when they put a hub on there. They think the races are pressed in all the way. They might not be. They should be checked. Make sure those races are pressed in all the way. And then when you put it on the, on the spindle, you, you set the nut and you back it off a little bit to get that three to five thousandths clearance. Now, back in the old days, you know, here's Timpkins. This is Timpkins' uh, recommendations for lubrications and bearing adjustment. Here, I'll tell you exactly what it says on this, on this spindle here. Tighten the inner nut while rotating the wheel until a slight bind so the bearings and surface are all in contact. Then back it off the inner nut a quarter to a third. Allow the wheel to rotate freely. Install the washer and tighten the outer nut. Final adjustment should be within 1,000 to 10,000 movement. All right. To do that, you got to have a filler gauge. But Experienced mechanics, they've been doing it for years, tighten it up, back it off. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing it this old way, way Tepkin Timken is uh, explaining it. It's because today, grease seals are ball. In the old days, you had raw hide seals that would wear a groove into your grease seal germ. 
It's Demco. One of the companies come out with a wear band on it. Fine, solve that problem. And the other problem is uh, spindles do are wearing. And then when they get to a certain point, they get over 10,000 square, you know, the regular seals probably won't hold up. It just wobble just enough for that seal to break loose. And you got to keep oil on these hubs. Now these grease seals, today, I'll, give you a, I'll tell you a little story. Years ago, back in 1979, salesmen came in with these new type of grease seals. They spun inside the cell, and they were so soft, they recommended you just push them in on your hand. So this guy had this trailer, it's a tanker from New Jersey, in here in Pittsburgh. He didn't want to spend the money to take the axles out, build them up and remachine them. This was back in 1978, 79. He said, yeah, hey, I'll tell you, this salesman came in, showed me these new seals. You know, well, you want to try them? Maybe they'll get you home. I said, okay, so we took it all apart, cleaned his bearings up, replaced whatever we needed, the places, the new bearings and whatever. Put the oil in, they were oiled, they weren't, they weren't packed. Put new oil in it, put those new grease seals in there, sent them down the road. Three, four years later, I can't remember the exact date. This guy calls me out of the blue. He says, listen, uh, listen, uh, the, the seals you put in my trailer, I said, wait a minute, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe three or four years ago, you wanted to build up remachine my axles, but I couldn't afford it. And uh, you put these new seals in. It's still holding up. Not a drop of oil came out. So I was impressed. You know, the way these seals companies today were making these seals, I'm impressed. You know, they, they evolved into making something great. It's called the rawhide, stunt gun, and all of them. But the other thing I got a beef with is the spindles. People were checking, selling these gauges. One plate, check one germ. What are you going to do with all those plates? You know, people don't like cluttering up their toolbox with all these goofy gauges you don't need. In the machine shop here, we got micrometers. And right naturally, we can use a micrometer to check it. You check it all around, see how much wear is in it. Another thing you could buy for probably a hundred bucks, this deep throat dial indicator. This will go up and check up to a four inch diameter. It'll check all these journals, all these journals. You don't have to spend all that money for somebody that says a go or a no-go. You know, that's crazy. And another thing, if you wanted to check play in there, what do you think this is? It's a filler gauge. Yeah, you could, get, you could take out your 6,000s, 3,000s, or whatever, and then you could just start putting it in there, filling it around, slide it in there. These things will flex, they'll go right in there if there's clearances. And you can check your clearance. Right now, I'm trying to get six thousandths on there. I can't get six thousandths on there. As far as I'm concerned, I can see it's wobbling a little bit. Is it wobbling enough to send this thing to the junkyard? No. My experience, no. I've seen people buy housings, use housing wore out worse than that, and drive them for five, ten years. You know, you've got to be careful. The reason these spindles are burning up. Lack of maintenance. You got to make sure when you take do a brake job, for instance, back jack that truck up, back the slack adjuster off, rotate that tire. You would experience a mechanic. They can feel while they're rotating and hear how smooth that thing's spinning. They know that bearing ain't bad. But then again, it's going clunk 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 when you put a bar under. Put a big bar under that tire and check it like if you were checking a kingpin or a or a ball joint on a truck or something like that. If it's going, it's going clunk, 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 clunk. Now you got to take that axle shaft off or take that hubcap off that, off that trailer, drain the grease, take the inner nut off, or if you've got a pro nut or whatever, just that preload. You want that preload, you know, if, you don't, if, you don't, if, you, if you're not good enough or experienced enough to tighten it up and back it off, get it down on the cable. Sweet spot's around 3,000. That's the sweet spot. That's where you want that movement. Tighten it up, lock it down there. And so, another thing about tightening it, you know, Tim can give you these instructions. These are old instructions, mind you. You, you tighten it up till there's a bind on it and you back it off eight to a quarter turn. You gotta be careful with that. Because these new seals require 
a lot of force sometimes to put it on the, on the germ. And I've talked to some mechanics that thought they had the bearing preloaded, they didn't. They weren't paying attention, and they tightened it up and backed it off, air was wobbling like crazy. You've got to make sure that grease hole is, all, is seated all the way. So kind of a good company like Stunco, for instance, they'll tell you, while you're rotating that wheel, you tighten up the torque to 250 pounds. Back it off. While you're rotating it, torque it down to about 100 pounds. Back it off. Torque it down to about 50 pounds. Then back it off that eighth and quarter turn. And then you see, you'll get your end play. Or use your dial indicator if you're not experienced enough to do it. But six dozens, where on these journals, is not a reason for replacing the spindle. Beware of that. Beware of that. Uh, you know, grease seal companies are probably, I've talked to some grease seal people who work in the grease seal companies, engineers. You know, they say around 10, 12, you know, you, know, you, you, you might ask, that seal might fail. But I've seen them hold up. 20 some thousand square. I recommend you running in that like that. But I'm telling you, you know, don't listen to that. And don't go buying them stupid gauges. You'll buy a dial kit, dial calipers, micrometers. Just get a filler gauge. And the spindle itself, I mean the bearing itself, it's right there. But the main thing, if you do got to replace the bearing, the spindle, they go, they're going to burn up. They're going to wear out probably more if somebody runs it too much. It's going to bang the hell out of that out of bearing. Sure, it's going to prematurely wear that spindle out. Where it ain't going to be able to hold the seal. You want to make sure you do it right. You want to make sure that you're using the spindle, a one-piece spindle, not a bunch of pieces that you got to thread in, put something in there, and weld it and thread it in, bring a lathe on site and boring bars and all that stuff. You don't have to do that. If you see how these spindles are made. Spindles are pre-made, they're put in a machine, they're using a friction weld method to put these spindles on. It takes about 30 seconds and it's lined up perfectly. Watch the YouTube videos they got out there. Look up replacing spindles on banjo housing. It takes them about 15 seconds and if you look how they do it, they friction weld it on and then it rolls up in and out. You know, just explain that to you. If you look in here carefully, you can see the residue of that friction weld. This ain't how thick the housing is. This is how thick the housing is. This is residue of that friction weld. On the outside, they shave it off. You're not supposed to remove material in there on the inside. When you're removing material on the inside to put stuff in there and plug weld it and do all that crazy stuff to it, thinking it's going to be stronger and better than new, you're wrong. It ain't. Replacing it the way it was originally manufactured is the only way to do it. And then some people are claiming it's revolutionary that they got. Their spindles are serviceable. Wait a minute, they're serviceable. You gotta bring a lathe on site, you gotta clean, you gotta, you gotta torch out that friction weld, you gotta get in there for grinder, and then you gotta get that hunk of metal, put it in a lathe, try to fit it on there till you get it fitted in there. And when you might have a gap that wide, then you're plug welding all that stuff in there. Come on, come on. It's serviceable? You gotta grind, cut, grind the weld all back out. Us, we could cut the spindle off with a bandsaw, put another one on. First time, anytime. If you need it done five, ten times, you don't. But my experience in the last 50 years, once that spindle's put on that housing, there's only maybe about a 2% chance that you might see that truck again with another burned up spindle. That's the truth. It ain't going to happen twice. Very seldom. So, what I recommend, if anybody wants to get involved in replacing spindles on trucks and trailers, it's, it's lucrative. You can make a lot of money at it. And, you're, and it's a win-win situation because you're saving them a lot of money. We charge anywhere from $1,200 to $1,500, depending on how far we go, to put a spindle on like this, the same way as a trailer. Then it's $200 less if you got a three-quarter ton truck, Chevy truck, Ford truck, Ram, doesn't matter, Toyotas, metrics, even off-road vehicles we put spindles on. See this spindle here? Some tractors like John Deere makes for backhoes and stuff like that. They got a planetary on it, so you got the inner bearing, outer bearing, then you got a, a spline on here. 
that, that the hub's got a planetary on it to power those big wheels. We've even put those on. It's adaptable to that. It's adaptable to all of your foreign vehicles. Then in the metric system, this is the best system out there. It's adaptable just about to replace anything that has a full floating system. Spindle. If you're interested, look at our website, libertywelding.com. Uh, email me at uh, info at libertywelding.com or call me. 877 toll free 661 1776. And by the way, we had that number since the phone was invented. We got more experience than anybody in the country, possibly the world. If anytime you need anything, any questions answered, feel free to call me or email me. I thank you for watching this video. If there's anything I miss, you know, lay it out there in your reviews or whatever. But I got more experience than most people about this kind of stuff. Thank you for watching.